This is a really hard one. This is a really hard one, even as an adult. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never hurt. But it is what it is. And as long as something makes you happy, you really have to just stop worrying about the haters, stop worrying about anyone that doubts you, and just keep moving forward. You need to make sure that you come first. guys and welcome to life with mayor in today's video i wanted to have some real talk with you guys some real conversation so what i'm going to be discussing today are five ways you can show yourself self-love starting today so if you guys want to know how you can give yourself self-love whether you're a male or female just keep watching so with the pandemic going on i know that mental health has been a serious issue for many people including myself i definitely have not felt maybe as happier and you know upbeat as my usual self because i do like to go out i do like to do things i do like to see family i do like to see friends and it definitely has paid a toll on me as well as my family. I mean, I love my job, I love what I do, and virtually teaching is definitely, definitely different. It's definitely hard, especially for kindergarten children. I mean, even just to get their attention on Zoom, it's really, really tricky and it's draining. It's 10 times the workload because you're creating everything virtually for them to see as opposed to having things in their hands to manipulate and to play with. Kindergarten is all about play. How can you play virtually? It's a much different, so it's a lot harder on the teachers and myself, the ECE. So it definitely has paid, paid a toll for myself and for many others, you guys included, I'm sure you're probably feeling a lot different than you did before this pandemic. So I wanted to tell you guys five ways that you can start loving yourself. You can try to get rid of those depressed feelings, those anxiety feelings, and those sadness, that sadness that you may be feeling. So the first tip I wanna give you guys is to not worry about the opinions of others. So I know this is a really tricky one, especially with social media. I find that since Facebook has, came, has come around, Instagram, TikTok, all these things, we're just looking, we're browsing through our phones, we're seeing what this person's doing and that person's doing, and we start to feel upset. We start to feel, you know, why is that person doing this and I'm not? Well, why do they have that and I don't? We start comparing ourselves. We shouldn't be doing that. We shouldn't be, you know, worrying about that and worrying what people are thinking. I've started posting whatever I want, whenever I want, on my Instagram, on my YouTube channel. It's my outlet. It is where I go to discuss topics that I enjoy, things that I wanna express, things I wanna do, pictures I wanna show, videos I wanna do. And honestly, there are haters out there, I'm sure there are, but I have decided not to worry about the opinions of others. This is a really hard one. This is a really hard one, even as an adult. I mean, we tell kids all the time, sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never hurt. But guess what? Names do hurt. They definitely hurt even as an adult. When somebody says something, why are you doing that? Or how come you're doing this? Or how come you're with that person? Or, you know, they start questioning you. You, you start to think, you start to wonder, you know, am I making the right choice? Am I doing the right thing? How come they're saying this? So I want you to just think about it for a moment and just try your very best not to think about what other people are thinking about you. What's important is what you think about yourself. If you think that you are a certain way, then believe it, go with it, say it. You just have to have your eye on the prize. Keep thinking about your goals. Think about what you want to achieve. Don't worry what other people are doing. Don't worry what they're thinking about you. Just keep on moving forward. This is what I have to tell you. There are many, many times people have doubted me. They have doubted my YouTube channel. They have doubted my love for photography and for videography. Oh, you're always taking pictures. Oh, you're always videotaping the kids. I love it. It's a passion of mine and I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing it because it's getting me to where I am right now. This is a main reason why I started my YouTube channel back when I did is because I wanted to document the cooking that I did. I've always wanted my children to know how I cook what I do. And in creating these YouTube videos, the cooking ones came first. They have somewhere to go now. If they want to know, hey, how did mom make that chicken parmesan? Or how did mom make that eggplant parmesan? Or whatever the recipe may be, the minestrone soup. You guys have to go check out my cooking videos, by the way. They have somewhere to go now. They don't have to ask. I mean, I would be more than happy to tell where or how to cook the recipe. But now they have somewhere to go back and look at those memories. And they're there forever for them, for their kids, for their grandkids. And it brings me great joy that we have those memories together. 
and I don't really care what anybody thinks. There are people that have expressed their opinion to me about what I'm doing and oh, what are you doing always putting out your life there? You know what? It is what it is. I'm making an income from this, from my passion, from what I enjoy, from what my goal is. And that's all that matters. And it makes me happy. And as long as something makes you happy, you really have to just stop worrying about the haters, stop worrying about anyone that doubts you and just keep moving. Another thing I wanna tell you guys, number two, is to treat yourself. For me, this is a very hard one because I have three kids and I'm always thinking about them first, no matter what. I know people say, oh, you gotta love yourself, you gotta love yourself. I do love myself, but I'm always in the back of my mind thinking about my kids. If I go out to buy food, I'm thinking, hold on, what are they gonna eat? Do they have something to eat? I'm always thinking about that. If I buy a new pair of jeans, oh wait, I think one of my kids needed some pants as well. Let me go check their wardrobe and see what they need. This is just the mentality of a typical parent or a mother and that's what I am. Like my shirt says, mama needs coffee. Definitely need my coffee to keep me going and my wine once in a while. But yeah, that, that's just what I do. I think about my kids first. They're always my number one priority and it's hard. It's hard for me to even think about buying something for myself. I remember making a purchase, I think it was just about $100 for myself in clothing. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just spent $100. I was in shock. I, w I, I couldn't do it. But now I'm like, you know what? I need to reward myself. I need to treat myself. And that's what I've been doing with my YouTube channel. Every time I've hit 1,000 subscribers, 1,000 subscribers, I said that I was gonna treat myself to all-you-can-eat sushi, and I think I was only able to do it one time because the restaurants were closed down due to the pandemic. But I'm treating myself. I'm buying myself some new makeup. I'm buying myself a new outfit because I deserve it. I'm working so hard. I'm taking care of my three kids, and I am doing a really good job at it. I am confident in the mother that I am, and I'm proud of how they are growing up, and I'm very, very happy for that. And so I deserve to treat myself, to reward myself. Now, a reward doesn't have to be something materialistic. It can also be treating yourself to a bath, giving yourself a self-care Sunday, doing some facial masks, trimming your beard if you're a male, giving yourself a haircut, you know, when they're open, and just taking care of yourself. Just, just treat yourself. Buy yourself that Starbucks coffee for $10. That's exactly what I did the other day. I just treated myself and you know what? It feels really, really good. I'm still at the back of my head thinking, oh my gosh, I feel so bad I didn't buy anything for the kids, but I always end up bringing them something. Anytime I go out and buy myself a drink, buy myself something to eat, I'm always bringing them back something and they end up eating more than I do. <laughs> but that's just how, how I think, that's how I work. That's just how being a mother is. But you definitely, definitely, need to make a priority to treat yourself and to reward yourself. Number three, give yourself a break. This is another tricky one for me. Up to this day, I'm still working on this. Whenever I say I'll take a break, I literally will sit down for two minutes and then I'm back up again. I'm a go-getter. I don't sit down for even a moment. Naps, sitting down, these things, I try to not do. They're almost absolute because I like to be on the go. Any waking moment there is, I like to be doing something productive, whether I'm cooking or cleaning or editing or doing something with the kids or folding laundry or going to do errands. I'm always doing something that I feel is productive that should be done as opposed to just resting. But I'm finding out that sometimes you get cues from your body and you need to listen to them. If your body is feeling tired, just lay down, take a break. If you're getting a headache, just rest. Take an Advil, lie down, relax, whatever it may be. Plug in some essential oils, just inhale them in, close the door in your bedroom, and you need that. And sometimes I'll tell my kids, mommy needs a break. Mommy needs a time out. And I'll just go up to my room or wherever it may be. Or sometimes I even just go for a long drive. I actually made a couple reels on Instagram. You guys have to go check it out of me in the car. and. It's enjoyable. You can put whatever music you want. The kids are not there. You just take a break. Give yourself that opportunity to just unwind. Be in your own thoughts, be in your own moment, not worry about anybody else, what they're doing, what they have to do, and not hear the word mom, 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 100 million times. Because if I'm trying to do something, I'm definitely hearing my name or mom being called 100 million times from all different areas of the house. And yeah, you definitely need that break. You need to be able to take a break, even if it's five minutes, 15 minutes, just to you know take a breath and give yourself that opportunity just to recharge and to refocus. 
and to think about what you need to do. There are so many times that I'm just feeling so overwhelmed with things that I need to do, things that I've heard, things that I, I have to, that I've finished and I just need to, you know, prioritize things and I don't get that opportunity to take a break. But I'm slowly but surely learning how to take a break and eventually it'll be something that just comes easily but whatever it may be, you guys need to make sure that you take your breaks because you are worth it and you deserve that. So my fourth tip for you guys is to prioritize yourself. So like I said, as a parent, this one is very tricky to make yourself number one. Numero uno. Definitely have not been number one in my books for a very long time. I had my eldest son when I was 19. I'm 37. So that's almost 20 years of me not putting myself first. I am starting to do it now as my kids are getting older. My youngest is gonna be four this year. So I'm learning. I'm learning how to prioritize myself. It's hard. It definitely is hard. The kids always come first to me, what they need, what they want. It's just, it's just like an instinct. It's that motherly instinct or fatherly instinct that if your kids want something, they need something, even if it's just your attention, you put whatever you're doing aside and you give it to them. I feel guilty. I feel bad if they're calling me, mommy, mommy, come play. Mommy, come see this. Mommy, come to that. I feel almost guilty if I don't do it. But I'm slowly starting to let them wait, especially with my three-year-old. I'm starting to teach him how to wait. Give me two minutes. He doesn't have a concept of time at this age, obviously. But just telling him, wait, mommy will be right with you. Give me two minutes, color that page, and then I'll be right with you. That way I'm showing him that mommy is important too. You need to make sure you show your kids, if you're a parent, that you are important too, that you love yourself. If you don't show them that you love yourself, that you take care of yourself, that you're making yourself a priority, they will not feel the same way. They will feel the same way about themselves and they will not see themselves as a priority and they will put everyone else ahead of themselves. So you need to show them that you are important and that you matter and that you're a priority. No matter what anybody thinks of you, you need to make sure that you come first. Parent or not, you need to be a priority. Not your friend, not your mother, not your grandfather, not your kids, you. Because when it comes down to it, nobody, nobody in this world will love you more than yourself, okay? You need to make sure you know that because no matter how much your husband or your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your kids tell you they love you, I'm sure they do, you need to love yourself first. And if you don't, it's gonna be really hard for anybody to love yourself. So make sure you put yourself first, make yourself that priority, do what you want to do and need to do within reason, of course, you're not gonna neglect your children, I'm not telling you to do that, but let them wait, let them wait a minute. Your husband asks you for something, sure hon, I'll be there in just a moment. Just so they, they know that, yeah, you're listening, you're gonna do it, but you come first, especially if you're doing something for yourself. So the fifth and final tip that I wanna share with you guys, number five, is to take care of your body. So with your mental health goes your physical health as well. If you're not eating well, drinking enough water, if you're not bathing, your hygiene, you're not brushing your teeth is not good, if you're not giving yourself physical activity, if you're not doing all of these things, you will not feel good about yourself. I'm not saying that you have to look like a beauty queen or a handsome prince every single day of your life, but you need to take care of yourself, make sure you're properly groomed, make sure you bathe every day, if not twice a day, make sure you're brushing your teeth, dental hygiene is very important, eating the right fruits, vegetables, meats, whatever you name it, whatever's healthy, whatever kind of diet you guys are on, make sure you're eating what's right and make sure you're giving yourself the proper exercise. If I'm stuck inside virtually teaching all day, I get an itch that I need to go outside. I need to do something. I'm like, guys, get your jackets on, let's go. We go for a walk, we go for a drive, we go to the park, we do something physical. Or if we can't go outside, we're jumping on the trampoline, we're playing just dance, we are moving. Because if you're not moving, you feel even more depressed, you feel sad, you don't feel good about yourself. So in order for your mental health to be good, you need to make sure that your physical health is in check as well. So, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but taking care of my appearance as well also helps with my mental health. I know a lot of women uh, specifically that love makeup, you know, if they're feeling down, they just 
they just gravitate towards the makeup they'll do like a really creative makeup look and i do do that not for that reason all the time but it does make me feel great when i put on my makeup and honestly whatever makes you feel good whether it's putting on a nice outfit whether it's um getting your hair done doing your hair putting on some makeup if you're a guy shaving your beard styling your hair whatever it may be whatever makes you happy about yourself your physical appearance whatever makes you feel clean and nice do it because that's definitely gonna help with your mental. If you're feeling lousy on the outside, you're smelly, you're stinky, you didn't bathe, you know, your hair is not washed, how do you expect your mental health to feel any better? Sometimes I'll feel really down and upset some days and I'll be like, you know what, let me go do my nails. So I'll get my nails done and I feel, no, I'll do my own nails, but I'll feel really good after I do my nails. So that's just a little something that you guys can do as well just to kind of you know make yourself feel a little bit better about yourself not to say that the physical is everything because definitely is i hope that you today got a tip or two that can help you out throughout your everyday help you to relieve some of that depression or anxiety or any of those sadness feelings that you may have and i hope that you are taking care of yourself because one thing that i want you to take from this video is that you need to make sure you remember that self-love is definitely not selfish and remember that because I, for many years, have thought that if I take care of myself and I put myself first, I'm being selfish. And it's definitely not the case. If you take care of yourself, you love yourself, and you're showing your kids that, then that's definitely self-love, and it is not selfish. You're showing them to love themselves. You can love others as well. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, please give a big thumbs up. If you're new here, you can also hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications so you guys will know each and every time I make a video. And I'll see you in another video. Thanks for dropping by, guys.